you've had those conversations where you're starting to really understand what the goals are, mm -hmm. you know, of a particular yeah. individual. And it really helps with uh, succession planning, which is something I think some we fall short on. But when you understand those goals and you really are trying to empower someone yeah. and be part of their success, you're going to start to put succession plans together. Mm -hmm. And that's a really great way of just beginning to empower other people on your team. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Project She Leads. My name is Nori Joaquin, your host. If this is your first time with us, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you will consider subscribing. So today we are landing the plane, part three of relational leadership. We have covered so many different topics and tips on how you can be more proactive and be more relational. So we're going to wrap up this conversation with my guest, Wilma. Wilma, welcome back. Thank you so much. Excited to continue this conversation. <laughs> so today we're gonna just bring it all home. So we have talked about taking a genuine interest in others. We've talked about showing empathy. We've talked about building time for relationships. We've talked about having fun with your team. We talked about showing appreciation. And so all of these things leads us to empowering others, which is really at the core mm -hmm. of leadership. Yes, I think empowerment is so important for your teams. You want to be able to encourage them to take leadership on different projects. You want to advocate for them. You want to make sure that they feel like they can take leadership on different things. Um, one of the things that I kind of noticed is when I had someone join my team, again, I had a before and after moment with her. And before when she joined my team, she was very hesitant, was lacking confidence, um, was not sure what to do, always was asking questions, which is a good thing, but she just was lacking the confidence to take on some of these projects. And I didn't understand why. And then I realized it was because she wasn't empowered in the past mm -hmm. to do that. And so I started to empower her. I started to give her projects um, that kind of increased in terms of responsibility. And she was just really starting to learn more about what that looked like and that she could feel proud of that. So it could take on in different forms. It could be giving them the opportunity to, um, you know, work on a policy. It could be taking on a new project, leading conferences that maybe they've never done before. Um, you know, just something that taps into their strengths and lets them know that you trust them and you believe in them. Yeah, that's really good. I think it's important too when you're trying to empower others is you really first need to understand what their goals are. Yes. And yes. so having that conversation, which if you've been doing some of the other mm -hmm. things, you've had those conversations where you're starting to really understand what the goals are, mm -hmm. you know, of a particular yeah. individual. And it really helps with uh, succession planning, which is something I think some we fall short on. But when you understand those goals and you really are trying to empower someone yeah. and be part of their success, you're going to start to put succession plans together. Mm -hmm. And that's a really great way of just beginning to empower other people on your team. That's a really great point. I love hearing that because sometimes we don't think about that, that when we have people on our teams, when we want to be able to give them the opportunity to lead and to learn, because you don't want to be the only one that's doing everything. You want right. them to grow. You're in charge of their careers in a sense and where they're going to go and let them fly one day, you know, and if you're holding back and you're not giving them that opportunity to empower them and you're micromanaging them, um, you know, it's really going to hold them back. And um, that's not really something that you want to do as a leader. Right, right. Now, I know in some of our previous conversations, you have mentioned understanding the strengths of those mm -hmm. around you, yes. which again, it really just kind of goes hand in hand with empowering others, because when you understand the strengths of those around you, you can assign them or reassign them based on what those strengths are. Mm -hmm. Because how many times have people really been put in positions that they're really not a good fit for. Right. And sometimes you can misunderstand that and think that they're just really falling short when really their, their strengths are, are really not being utilized. Mm -hmm. So it's so important to really understand what those strengths are in order to empower someone. And I completely agree with that. Um, I had a manager who was very in tune with that. And so she had hired somebody who was kind of more in an administrative role 
But over time, as she invested in this person, she started to learn more about this person and her skills. She was a strategizer. She loved designing. She loved creativity. And so she brought that and created a new position for her. Wow. Um, yeah, doing content marketing. And that's what can come out of empowering somebody and tapping into those strengths. And that's what you want to see in a company is where people are encouraging you to do what you do best because that's going to help them and their bottom line as well. Right, right. And I, in our previous episode, just kind of at the tail end, we talked a little bit about like self-performance, things yeah. like that, or performance reviews. Um, and, and one of the other key areas um, is providing key uh, feedback when you are trying to empower someone else, because, you know, it, it you need that feedback in order to understand where you are, yes. you know, what other things you need to work on, what you're doing really well that you can continue to strengthen. Mm -hmm. And just maybe some of those areas that maybe you may need to expand your skill set, um, learn a little bit more. But feedback is so key. Yes. It validates mm -hmm. your strengths and it's so motivating. Absolutely. I love when my manager is giving me feedback. I love when she's telling me the good and the bad because that makes me a better employee. And then it's gonna help me to help my team become a better, um, become better team members. Um, you know, and the one thing that I've learned over time is that groups, um, you know, the more that they're empowered, the better they are at problem solving. And when you're working together, you're gonna to be able to um, be more cohesive. You're gonna be able to be more creative. You feel like you can make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> right. You can have those failures. Right. It's okay to have that. Um, you know, again, you know, just with how I operate because of my faith, I am always trying to give that opportunity for grace and forgiveness, you know, in the workplace. And that's the best way to live it out sometimes. And you do that through your teams as well. Um, you know, if you're getting angry at someone because they make a mistake or something, they're probably not going to take a risk again <laughs> right. or not want to take on that project again. And they're probably going to lose some confidence along the way. So empower them, let them know it's okay to make those mistakes. Right, right. I think that's really good. To me, one of the best things that you can do to empower other people is to simply be available. Yes. I think so many yeah. times we've had leaders that aren't available to us. Mm -hmm. They don't have time. They don't want to be bothered. And it's really hard to feel like someone is on your side that is trying to help you succeed to the next place that you want to go to. And so just being available, you know, you've talked about before have, having an open door policy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, you know, that's showing I'm available for you. And so I think it's important for your team to understand I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. I'm here to help you succeed. What can I do to get you there? I'm always available to you for help, for advice, um, for any of those things. And I think that that really can help any, any employee feel like, you know, I can continue progressing in my career because my leader is available to me. Yeah. And it's really important to continue to remind them of that. You know, sometimes you can just tell them that and then hope that they remember. I think that sometimes just that emphasis that you are available for them and that you want to hear from them, you know, and just come visit me sometimes and just, you know, say hi or, you know, vice versa. Right. You know, sometimes you don't even have to come have them come to you. You can right. go to them as well. I think as good as like all of this, all of this is, and it's definitely very needed there are some dangers in being too yeah. relational. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and really what I mean by that is, is taking all of these qualities and all of these actions and taking them to the extreme. Mm -hmm. But leaders really have to find that balance between being relational, but then also maintaining a healthy and appropriate working relationship. Yes, there's so many cautions with this. Um, you know, I think that sometimes you want to be careful to be seen as just the fun boss. Right. <laughs> you want to be careful with that. But then also something that you want to be careful with is oversharing. Um, sometimes as a manager, because you're trying to be very relational, you're trying to almost become their friend, you're going to be um, more comfortable with saying, hey, I'm actually not comfortable with this project. I don't know what to do. <laughs> you're going to want to be careful right. saying that because 
they're going to be nervous about that project. They're probably not going to even trust you to lead that project at that point. And that's probably what you are not trying to communicate. So it's really important to be uh, intentional, again, of what you're sharing with your teams um, so that, again, you want to make sure that they have confidence in you and you have confidence in them. Yeah, I think with the oversharing, too, you don't want to share too much about your personal life. I mean, if yes. this is not someone mm -hmm. that you already knew on a personal level prior, mm -hmm. yeah. you really don't want to start going into, you know, all of your dirty laundry. Um, <laughs> but then also you can overshare on just your own professional opinions, which is sometimes a little hard to do if something's kind of coming down the pipeline that maybe you don't really agree with, but now you have to share this with your team you might be tempted to be like, yeah, I don't understand why, why we're having to do this or this doesn't make any sense or whatever. Um, and I think you have to be really careful of really not sharing that because your team will quickly adapt, I think, sometimes to the attitude that you yes. come in with. Mm -hmm. And so just being able to share what needs to be done without sharing your prof professional opinion is is so key. You know, when a company is going through change, um, every company is going through that. You have to be careful with that because usually as leaders, you want to have your teams come alongside you. You want to lead them through that change. And when you're sharing your per professional opinion during that time, you're going to create some gaps. They're not going to have trust in the process. They're going to wonder what the company is doing. So I think that's really important to, to be mindful of. Right. And one of the... Um, our very first um, episode, part one, we talked about empathy. Yeah. And I think empathy is one of those things too that sometimes can go to the extreme because, you know, while we want to be empathetic, at the same time, we're not giving up our authority. And I think mm -hmm. we need to understand that this is not a trade. Exactly. That mm -hmm. I'm going to give up my authority in order to be empathetic. You still can have balance between the both and, and being empathetic, but still maintaining, you know, your authority. Yeah, I think you want to be careful with having someone walk all over you. Right. In that <laughs> in that moment, um, because they're probably going to maybe they might see it as, um, you know, see it as something else. And you don't want that to happen. You have to have that balance. Um, I think that's something else that's really important is um, ethics. And when you start to get to know your manager or vice versa, um, you really get to go get close to each other. And sometimes that manager or that person, they might be doing something unethical. Mm. And you might find yourself in a situation or position where you might be covering for them because you have developed a great relationship with them. So right. just be careful of that um, you know, type of relationship as well and make sure that you're not compromising yourself and your values in the process. That's really, really good. I think too, um, you know, showing vulnerability. We've talked about this before on, on this channel and just how important it is to be vulnerable. And I had shared a story about um, how I had decided to uh, share something with my team. Um, we were going through a lot of changes as you just talked about. And so I had a lot on my plate, a lot going on. And so I wanted to just to be kind of transparent and just say, you know, listen, like there's there's so much going on, which they were, you know, well aware of, but there were things that I was involved in that they were not. Yeah. And so I wanted to make sure that they understood that there's a lot of other things going on that, you know, you're not part of. And so um, obviously I didn't mention, say it that way, but it was, you know, if I'm a little delayed in responding, I just want you to understand it's because there's all these things going on. Yeah. Um, but what ended up happening was that then that got kind of thrown back in my face. Mm -hmm. And so I think that when you are being vulnerable, it's super important to still have expectations, set expectations. Yes. And I think that was part, probably a part where I failed that even though I shared, you know, I might be a little delayed, I probably should have followed that up with, but I still expect this mm -hmm. because I think that had I done that, then I probably, you know, probably wouldn't have been thrown back in my, in my face. Um, and so I think that that's really important is to always be able to like set those expectations. Yeah, I think that's great. Having expectations, creating those boundaries, I think is going to set you up better. Um, and then you're going to probably have a better relationship as a result of that. So, but just make sure that you remember that you do have that um, leader manager relationship with your teams and um, make sure you have that balance. So I have a question for you. Yes. 
that I did not prepare you for <laughs> oh as we prepared for this episode. Um, what are your thoughts on social media? I have so many thoughts. I I am in a department that does social media, and I have a very hard time with people who are always oversharing. Um, yeah, in terms of social media, and we can go into so many different layers with this, but I think it's really important if you're in the working uh, in the work atmosphere to make sure a first of all that you're very careful with what you're sharing about your relationships with coworkers with your managers. Um, be careful about what you're sharing in terms of change. Maybe you're being acquired by a company or by a merger. Make sure that you're watching for that. Um, make sure that anything that you're saying, you have to remember that it's going to be there forever. Right. It's going to be captured somehow. Right. <laughs> and so you have to be mindful of that. Try to have maintain a professional atmosphere on your social media page because whether you like it or not, it might not just be your friends that are seeing that page. Um, it can also be um, people outside of the company and they're going to see and they're going to make some judgments about you depending on what you're posting. So, yeah, just definitely be careful about that, but still have some fun and let your personality, personality <laughs> shine through. So I have personally been burnt by this, by oh. social media, um, because, you know, you think it's like a great way to connect, you know, with other colleagues. And yeah. so um, but I was in a situation where um someone was trying to to find something on me. And mm, so they yeah. had someone else, literally this person scrolled through six months of wow. my mm. social media to try to find something that I might have said that they could use against me. And so after that experience, um, I told myself I will never be connected with anyone that I work with on social media. And so I, I I'm, I'm still connected with people, but I don't send requests. I don't mm -hmm. send requests to be friends. I don't send requests to follow anyone that I work with anymore. Um, if they send one to me, depending on that relationship, you know, I may accept it, but, um, but I don't do that anymore because even though I, I try to be really careful about not sharing anything work related, mm -hmm. um, you just, you just never really know. Yes. You just don't, and you don't know who knows other people. Right. right. And so it's just such a, a tricky situation that you have to be really, really careful with. I, I completely agree. Um, something that I've told some of my colleagues in the past is, uh, I keep Facebook for a lot of my personal friendships and relationships for family. Uh, and then I keep LinkedIn for my professional network. And it's worked out pretty great in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I maintain my filters and my privacy settings for Facebook. And then LinkedIn, right. I make sure that I use that for its purposes. So anytime I would receive a, you know, a friend request from, you know, an ad rep or, you know, just a colleague or something, I usually redirect them to LinkedIn. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I've known someone who um, she set her name on all her like personal, like her Insta and Facebook. Um, she had her name in, in just kind of like a, a really weird formatting. I can't remember if it, she put her last name first and then her first name and then her middle name, but she did something mm -hmm. with her name so that she could not be found oh. <laughs> by <laughs> potential, that's, potential that's companies, idea. potential <laughs> colleagues. But I mean, there's there's ways, I think, of, of trying to do a workaround if yeah. you really just want to keep your social media just for your friends and just for your family, where you can feel like you're more free to just be who you are mm -hmm. and not risk, you yeah. know, um, any any company that you work for coming back and then and then using that. And I think it's important too if you're going to be looking for another job. Uh, recruiters are looking on Facebook and Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. So you want to be able to maintain a professional atmosphere on LinkedIn and try to keep that minimal and, you know, keep your privacy settings, you know, set to where you want it to be because people will be checking that out. So. Yeah. So no too relational on the social media. <laughs> well, Wilma, this has been so great. We have covered so much information in these three parts. Thank you so much for all of your insights. It's been awesome. Thank you. I've enjoyed this conversation. It's been a lot of fun. Yes. Well, thank you everyone for watching. Um, I hope again that you took something away from all three parts. Please consider leaving a comment and a like, and we will see you next time. Bye.